Sex Pistols are also touring, uh, yet they get a lot of flack. Um, what do you think of that? Is it justified? No, definitely not. I mean, there's, there's you know, the, the Western equivalent of the Taliban, who, who think that you shouldn't have any fun whatsoever, and that, uh, you know, but that you should preserve some kind of memory and keep your dignity and, and you know, no smiling and things like that. So I haven't got much time for them. Think of the Johnny Lydon commercial he did for the butter. It's great. It's great. In fact, the sales of the butter actually increased by 87%. So, the power of advertising. But he got a, got a lot of slack of, of flag for, for it, of course. Oh, yeah. well, I mean, Iggy Pop's doing car insurance now. Would you ever do that? Um, if they offered me enough money, yeah. Yeah, really? Well, why not? Well, well, who would you rather have it doing it? Phil Collins? I'd rather have you guys get some money. Well, would you rather he got richer? <laughs> no, you wouldn't. So why, can't, well, why shouldn't I do it? You see, I mean, like, we never took uh, you know, a vow of, uh, of poverty. And there's no sackcloth and ashes. Um, it was about doing what you're doing and being creative and imaginative in what you were doing. You know, on the John Lydon adverts, you know, very funny to watch. You know, and it, you know, it gets people having butter rather than. Uh, so we can see you on the telly in and out soon, maybe. Well, no, I mean, I'm, I mean, I say I would be interested, but uh, the chances <laughs> of being offered are two, two different things. You never know. But I, I, I don't think really I'm that famous, you see. Well, but John Lydon and Iggy Pop are. You have still no regrets. No regrets. No, no, no. No, it's, I mean, I mean, life's too short to have regrets. I mean, if you decide that there's something you're unhappy with, then just don't do it again. What do you think? Is punk dead, finally? And do you consider yourself a punk, actually? Well, yes, punk was n nothing to do with music, really. It was, it was an attitude. But is it gone? No, it's still there. That's not I good. mean, no, definitely not. Well, there's this whole new generation of kids who, who, all of a sudden the parents go, you know, they're, they're rooting about in the garage and they found these things and say to the dad, what's this? I said, oh, it's my record collection from when I was your age. And they listen to it and it's full of punk records. And they think, this is fantastic, it's a lot better than the stuff they're trying to sell us now. And so people get into the, into, you know, the bands that way. Punk is an attitude and it will never disappear. Yeah, so it's about being an active participant rather than just being a passive consumer. Um, you know, it's, I mean, it is anti-materialistic in that respect, that you don't need to have loads of money and loads of uh, equipment to, but, but to have a lot of fun making music. Well, in that respect, the world has turned a lot better because I mean, recording equipment has become really cheap and you have the internet, you can issue your own music. But why is the music industry putting <coughs> out just lousy records, basically? I mean, the music hasn't got any better of it. Because the music industry has never had the plot. Yeah. It's never defined what should be listened to. It's never... The interesting things have come completely off radar to the yeah, music industry. The yeah. But are there any good or new bands that you've spotted lately? <coughs> There's a band uh, I've been in the studio producing, actually, called Red Track. They're uh, from South End, three-piece. Okay. About 1920, something like that. Uh, they've got really good songs. Because my first priority was, if I'm going to produce someday, I need to like the song. Because the worst thing is to have to listen to it again and again and again. You know, and there's not enough money in the world to pay me to do that. But how did it work? Did they send you a tape or ask you or send you an email? Like, do you want to produce a record and you, you listen? Mail it over the internet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. It worked that way. Yeah, yeah. So if you think, you're, if you're playing a band and you think your songs are really good, you can send them to you? Yeah. And you want to produce that song? No, it depends on how I have to listen to it first. And then also I have to do the thing when I wake up in the morning and I'm thinking about the song. Because then I know it's, it's worth actually spending time doing. Because some songs are just, just in one ear and out the other. You know, there's, there's Most of them. The whole albums and things. I mean, all, the, the other week we were travelling, I had a long journey and we were listening to the, the Kings of Leon album. I c can't really remember anything except the, the single really. Except for the single, you can't remember anything except for the single. It was, I don't know, just did nothing at all for me. But they're huge. Yeah, that's great. Great following, but 
But so flies love shit, but I mean... <laughs> why are they huge then? I mean, because I have to agree. I, mean, I think there are two great songs on it. The single that they currently play on the radio and uh, Sex, on, Sex on Fire. Yeah, I like that well, song, it's brilliant. Well, it was that song that yeah. is, was the single in the UK, so it's yeah, another one. So why is it huge right now? Is it because the industry pushes it and radio plays well, it? It must be. It must be. It's not people, you know... I don't know. It's one of those things I don't even bother <laughs> asking myself about. You don't yeah. care about it at all? Not really, no. Yeah. You know, Good luck to them, but it's not really for me. Where do you get your music from then? Mm, I make it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't just listen to your own music, probably. Well, I do a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, you do. Well, I mean, it, but when I'm writing stuff, then that's in my head, and I don't want to pollute my mind with uh, listening to loads of rubbish. And yet you produce an album for a band. And it's well, not your own. No, no, there's only three tracks with it. Only three tracks. Yeah, but it, it, it'll probably develop into being an album. Thing. You spur my natural emotions. You make me feel I'm turning to hurt and I'm hurt And if I start a commotion I'll only end up losing you and that's worse You guys are also uh, acknowledged for being one of the first bands to really do it yourself and release your own records. Why did you do that? Because you got signed to a major label, right? Um, well, not before we'd done it ourselves. And doing it ourselves started other people. Other people thought, hang on, if they can do it, so can we. So that's how you got the, the, you know, the true indie uh, music scene in, uh, in uh, England. It was because people saw Buscots doing it and they thought, yeah, great, we could do that. I mean, Alan McGee's told me that. Spiral Scratch was what inspired him to, to, to start in the music business. So. Looking back at your artwork and the lyrics and the songs you issued, it struck me that this is really weird that it got censored heavily in England. Um, well, yes and no. I mean, it didn't get censored. I mean, censored is when you can't see it, when you can't listen to it. Um, on the radio, they won't play it. Oh, my name. Um, but I mean, nowadays after after about nine o'clock they will play it. Well, because they got fucking and stuff like that. You know. It's sad, right? I mean, well, I mean, but that's. I mean, thirty years ago it was a lot worse. Than that. <laughs> but I mean, like you say, we were never setting out to be commercial, or else you'd you'd turn all that down, and you wouldn't you wouldn't mention those things. Were you caught? Were you guys caught by surprise when you were a success? Actually, um, yeah, in a way. In a way. I mean. You didn't set out to become a success, or it was just... Well, no, not really. Well, we were doing what we considered to be the most uncommercial form of music possible. Oh, really? We expected people not to like it full stop. But just to have a, have a good laugh by an annoying people enough. And, and now your music is really poppy. Yeah, so, we're, so, so in some ways we're a failure. <laughs> 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 the whole career's been a failure. Did you expect actually uh, the bus bus to last long, <coughs> to last as long as they do? Uh, no, no. I, w I would have um, I would have made future plans if it if it only was going to no, carry true. on. No, that is true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but when we uh, got back together again in uh, uh, twenty years ago, this November. Um, it was only for three weeks, and then more and more tours were offered. And twenty years later, twenty years later, here we are. Here we are going back thirty years. This is still fun. Ah uh, yes. Um, Can't it's, it's, I mean, else. Yeah, not really, no. But I, I've never done anything else. Well, yeah. you, you studied. No, oh, I still wow. did, yeah. And then I had a job for about two months. But on the day when I, the day after I left the, the job it was the first day of um, the first Buscots gig so it was seamless really there's another thing uh, I found on a web was a funny uh, a funny coincidence uh, you guys played a show at the night Elvis died yes. and the same night you got offered a deal by A&I Records or United Artists yeah exactly yeah. 16th of August, yeah, 1977. That's yeah. weird. So we signed and we did a um, a gig 
which was also recorded for the TV as well. Yeah. And uh, the next day we saw the papers and Elvis had died. So, ooh. <laughs> and what did you think of it? I don't know. Too many cheeseburgers, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, you think what do you think of Elvis? I mean, uh, well, it's good. I mean, it, it wasn't, you know, anybody. Uh, really. I mean, I suppose I've been influenced by people who have been influenced by Elvis. But that's usually the way which things happen. Yeah. But I wasn't directly. Then. So you didn't know while you were playing? No, 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 no. No, no, only afterwards, yeah. Because there was no internet, you see. So news spread very slowly. <laughs> hey, talking about gigs and the internet, your show will be aired live tonight yes. in the Paradiso. Um, that's, I mean, uh, nobody could have expected that the techniques would go so fast. That, that you would play in a club that would be their own TV station. Uh, yes, I mean we did a we did a webcast about last time we did it. One was about four, maybe five, maybe six years ago. Already, um, but but the potential audience was far less than it, than it is now, and also people can see it at a better quality, and um, so it's it's better now. So if you're not there. You can check it out on the web. Well, yes. I mean, I mean, you know, like I say, I mean, I like people to see what we do, because a lot of people just think we're just, you know, we play in small clubs and pubs and, and things like that. And some people don't even know that we're still playing. All think, oh no, well, they can't really be all that good. Yeah. Um, and then we show them that we that we are. Come check them out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh.